I'm back with analyzing another Ruby fight scene. As usual, this choice was voted on by my beautiful patrons, and they voted for the white trailer. Analysis topics are always up to vote on my Patreon. If you want to have a say in what Ruby fight or trailer I do an analysis of next, consider becoming a patron. I appreciate the support, and even the smallest Patreon tier gets the chance to vote. Fun fact, of the four original color trailers, the white trailer has always been my least favorite. <laughs> and it's not Weiss's fault, really. It's just like the blank black void of the background is just so boring compared to the bright, intricate locations the other three girls have in their trailers. Also, Weiss's weapon is one of my least favorite weapons. Honestly, I think Weiss has the most boring combat style out of all of Team Ruby. Maybe out of the whole group of protagonists, except for maybe Ren. <laughs> and to top it all off, Mirror Mirror is just like one of my least favorite songs. Literally every single other Weiss song is infinitely better than Mirror Mirror, at least in my opinion. However, not to just crap all over the White trailer the whole time, this is probably the best choreography we've ever gotten for Weiss throughout the whole series. Monty himself knew how to use a rapier, and it shows how he reflected those skills onto Weiss directly here. Also, the White trailer is the only one where our main character doesn't blow through a a whole horde of bad guys. Having Weiss only face off against one giant enemy is a really cool, unique element for her trailer, especially being the trailer right after the red trailer. It was a cool, totally different experience from what Ruby had to face in her trailer. Anyways, enough about my dumb opinions, let's check out the trailer proper. Man, you know what's crazy? This was the first time we actually saw a character open their mouth. This was the first instance of lip syncing for the whole show. Wow. <laughs> Transitioning into the floor during the drop in the music is just a super cool touch. Though even today, I'm so unsure as to what is actually supposed to be happening. <laughs> is this a memory? What an odd thing to remember while performing a song. When the trailer first came out, I thought maybe she had like a part of her spirit fighting the Armagigas at the same time as her performance like a mirror world version of her. Perhaps the singing activated the fight, like some sort of spiritual bard thing. <laughs> or is all of this just kind of metaphorical? Like, is she not actually fighting anything physically and it's more just like a representation of an emotional fight Weiss is having? It's all very much up to interpretation, which back in February of 2013 was very intriguing. Nowadays, it's pretty commonly accepted that this is just a memory Weiss is having during her performance. The Shiro Miwa manga goes into detail about what the whole fight is about, but it's kind of questionable if this is meant to be considered canon or not, or as how RT tends to put it, canon adjacent, whatever the fuck that means, <laughs> or canon until it isn't, which basically means it's canon until we somehow retcon this into not being canon anymore. <laughs> In the manga, it's explained that this is a fight to test Weiss's skills and show that she's ready to attend Beacon. The giant knight that she's fighting and is also known as her primary summon is called an Armagigas. And I wouldn't be surprised if you never knew this fact because this name is literally never once ever said in the actual show proper. Hell, I don't even think it's mentioned in any of the supplemental material, including that Shiro Miwa manga. I'm pretty sure they've just called it that in like the director's commentary or some Q&A thing. And just like its name, what this actually is, is also never explained in the show or supplemental material. Technically, it's not just some random giant suit of armor. Technically, it's said that there is a Geist controlling the armor or like, a group of geists or something. <laughs> Just ignore the fact that literally every other time we've ever seen a geist possessing something, we can still see its mask somewhere on the outside of whatever it is it's inhabiting. This definitely isn't just some random retcon they came up with because they had no better excuse as to explain why there's a sentient suit of armor for Weiss to fight slash summon. <laughs> The fight starts with Weiss backflipping to dodge the Armagigas' first attack. I will say, even though I don't like Mirror Mirror, it's timed perfectly with the action of this video. 
Here's a fun thing. You can see the Armagigas' left hand really doesn't stay with the hilt of the blade very well. Technically, this attack was two-handed, but good old Lefty there just couldn't help but drift away at times. Aww. <laughs> Actually, this happens kind of regularly throughout the whole video, and it would be sort of tiresome to stop and point it out every single time. These sort of animation goofs never bother me. Mostly because, unless you do exactly what I'm doing, which is literally going through the whole video frame by frame, you would never notice something as minor as this. What's important is that it looks right when in full motion. Weiss moves very fast in this trailer, and because of that, we get some fantastic smear frames. <laughs> This spotlight that's on Weiss, giving her a distinct dark shadow underneath her for the whole of the trailer, is such a good way to help her pop against the background. So since Weiss moves very, very fast, it's hard to actually get to see what she's doing, which is why it's cool that they punctuate important movements after a strike with her posing, standing in frame slow enough for just long enough for us to see what she's doing, and to help make her look cool. Here's another little animation goof. The Armagigas his shadow is inaccurately placed around his shins rather than under his feet. Also, in this shot, he has the spotlight shadow underneath him, like how Weiss has, but in the immediate next shot, it's gone, and it looks like he's just standing within the void. But Weiss still has her spotlight underneath her. Also, it looks like her spotlight is placed at the same level that his shadow was inaccurately placed in the previous shot, as when she hits him, we can see her spotlight going through his shins rather than underneath his feet where the floor should actually be. Interesting. I love- this is why I love doing these. <laughs> Anyways, during this moment, the Armagigas blocks her attack, sending her flying upwards where she spins in midair to land back on her feet, giving Weiss just enough time to see his next attack and move out of the way again. <laughs> She moves behind him before bridging the gap and landing a few strikes on him, now with the camera placed in front of her so we don't actually see where her strikes are landing properly. This sort of camera move can work, though as I've explained in my Cinder vs. Rhodes analysis, it's not really that good of a move to do. I never like it when the camera is placed here during a fight. However, this is a great time to get a really good look at Weiss's face, where we can see very clearly she does not have her scar during this encounter. She does a quick jab, leading to the equivalent of an uppercut, but with a rapier, an extra little spin included, though it seems like the intention here is that the spin is what helped her rise up to reach the Armagigas' shoulder slash head area, because spins famously help you defy gravity. <laughs> <laughs> she has enough time to see he's moving to strike again and can just barely prepare herself for the hit. And just look at this impact. The bright glow emphasizing the strike is massive, yet importantly, it's always layered behind Weiss. Again, referencing that Cinder vs. Rhodes fight, the white glow of their weapons striking is always layered on top of the weapons and characters, which ends up just muddying the whole fight with these ugly flashes of white. Here, it's a great example on how to have the same exact effect, even more so with just how much it's filling the whole screen, but having it layered behind the characters helps so it doesn't confuse or muddy up the visuals of the actual fight. Weiss skids to a stop and just barely gets enough time to react to the next attack, side flipping out of the way of his blow. She backflips again to evade his follow-up swing, but doesn't have enough time to dodge his third strike, which sends her flying backwards. Looks like she tumbles so far her spotlight couldn't keep up with her, huh? <laughs> In actuality, it seems like this decision was on purpose, so now we can highlight the bright white of her glyphs that she's summoning. She, not super gracefully, is able to right herself back to her feet, and this is the first time we ever see Weiss summoning a glyph. And just look at that beautiful sparkle effect she has, trailing behind her fingers to initiate the glyph. This effect doesn't get used in the show proper, and I actually don't think it gets used again in this trailer. It's such a shame, because it looks so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's talk about Weiss's glyphs. In the current canon of the show, Weiss's glyphs, when neutrally summoned like this, basically acts as a platform to stand on. 
there are many instances of her glyphs working this way. When she uses her glyphs to launch or repel something, they turn black. Again, we see this many, many times. It's too dark to see here if the glyph changes to black underneath her, but I'm pretty sure not. This is a fascinating early look at how Weiss's glyphs were being conceptualized. They likely didn't fully plan out how exactly her glyphs would work yet by this point, making the white trailer something of a relic of early production. She glides underneath his swing and then, like, in the next shot, all of the whites from the windows are suddenly a lot grayer, and Weiss's exposure goes up to 100. She basically looks like she's teleporting to evade the next attack. I believe the intention is that she's just moving very, very quickly to the point that the camera couldn't keep up with her. But it kind of just sort of looks like Weiss is suddenly unlocking instant transmission. <laughs> Weiss does another dual spin mid-air attack before launching off another glyph to strike at his knees. A little thing that helps to elevate Weiss during this whole trailer is the little halo of white or black we see on her here and there. Whatever it is that's needed to help her stand out against the stark monochromatic surroundings she's layered on top of. The next volley she has is like the coolest looking her rapier skills has ever ever been. No mid-air twirls, no backflips, no too fast to see zipping around the whole arena. She's just standing there, delivering a multitude of attacks all in one shot from one angle. I wish Weiss, whose weapon is very technical when it comes to how it is used as a sword, would get a lot more choreography like this in the show proper, to better highlight the intricacy of how rapiers get used in battle. Though, the squash and stretch on her skirt and sleeves here goes absolutely bananas for like three frames. It's hilarious. <laughs> she launches herself into another uppercut, defying the laws of gravity and physics to spin counter to the momentum she currently had going to spin into another glyph. She goes flying at him, spinning to slice at his side, though to be fair, it sort of looks like the Armageigus would have been too far away from her to actually have her rapier hit him from this angle, but I understand layering and poser can be a nightmare. <laughs> As Weiss is recovering from her spin, the Armageigus sees his opening. Weiss manages to jump over his blade with some very impressive high knees. Damn. Unfortunately, it lines her up just perfectly to be haymakered by the Armageigus. She flies backwards and definitely lands on her neck. Oof, babes. You should see a chiropractor after all this. <laughs> it's her and Torchwick. Let's have a tally of how many times people land very painfully on their neck and shoulders during fights. <laughs> This little stumble, as she tries to stand back up, speaks fucking volumes. All this fight, she's been perfect. Perfectly composed, perfectly dodging or parrying strikes that come her way. Now, however, with that one hefty punch, she's tossed ungracefully face first to the floor, and her tiny stumble is enough to show how it's getting to her. Or, to perhaps use a terminology that would better fit Weiss, we're seeing a crack in the mirror and her suddenly distraught expression only helps to hammer it home. This is the first time she's looked anything other than confident or surprised this entire fight. And honestly, this little moment is infinitely more characterization than anything Ruby got from the Red trailer. Here's a fun thing. During this fade with the camera behind Weiss, we can see the transitional fade from the previous shot, but then for like a few frames here, we can faintly see that shot fade in and back out again, even though it's should already have been finished fading away, which is weird. <laughs> I fucking love this. This looks amazing. So Ruby's animation gets better and better every single year, we all know that, but I truly think Ruby would absolutely excel and blow it all out of the water if they played around with intense shading and highlights like this in the regular episodes. Come on, RT. I know the Maya engine can handle dynamic shading. Look at how beautiful this looks. Don't you want the whole show to look this good? <laughs> we cut back to the other Weiss standing up from after her hit, and this is the first time we get to see the cut on her face, and I'm gonna address it now. I don't know if this is how she got her scar. It much more looks like the cut is across her eyebrow and it's just dripping into her eye. Except 
As I was slowing down the footage to get a closer look, I discovered something super wacky. We can actually see her scar stretching into existence as the blood drips down her cheek here. It's hard to tell, but when her face is turned down, it's clearly not on her cheek. But as her face turns upward, we can see it gliding down with the blood. And it's very distinctly not aligned with the blood effect either. In fact, in just a few shots when Weiss is spinning, we can see it clear as day, right? Right there on her cheek. There is her scar. So, is the intention supposed to be that this is how she got her scar, or is this just an animation error? Well, the general consensus is this is in fact how she gets her scar, and it was probably just not aligned properly on her face for some reason. Maybe they didn't notice. But I remember this being up for debate a lot when the trailer first came out. We can also see during these shots an early remnant of an art direction for Ruby, is Weiss's hair becomes fully transparent when it's layered over her eyes. This way you can always see her eyes, even when her bangs are getting in the way. During the show proper, however, it doesn't work like that anymore. Now the only thing you can see through the characters' hair is their eyebrows, but not their actual eyes. So remember how I talked about Weiss's glyphs? Well, we can see the same thing with her dust, too. Honestly, most all of her dust works completely differently than how it works in the show proper. Likely because the extent of how dust works and what the different colors do, and even the idea of dust is itself was probably still in the very early stages of development. And for the white trailer, they likely just sort of picked random colors that would stand out and look cool and vibrant against the black and white surroundings. Something that's neat is Weiss's whole chamber of dust is glowing here, something that does not happen in the regular show. Also, Weiss's entire blade seems to be engulfed with the color of what it is she's using, which also doesn't make it into the show proper either. Though I wish it did. It looks very stylistically cool, and it'd make it a lot easier to know whether or not she is or is not using dust at certain points in time. She starts out with red dust, which seems to just be working as some sort of shield, while in the show, red is fire. Whether or not this shielding technique is flames is sort of up in the air. It looks like you could make an argument that this is flames, but it has kind of a weird effect to only be working as a shield. So as far as considered close to canon this is, I'm just gonna label it as ambiguously questionable. <laughs> Shout out to the fact that the Armagigas stood around and waited patiently for Weiss to stand back up and ready herself before he decided to continue his attack. Good to know some things never change with Ruby. <laughs> Weiss does a really cool super fast twirl, which I will say, twirling does not help in combat. It is always very unnecessary, but I'm willing to forgive it if it looks cool. That's how you get away with unnecessary bullshit in fight scenes. The cooler it looks, the more I'm willing to forgive it. <laughs> she launches a huge ice attack. Now the wiki says this is light blue dust, but this glow effect coming from her ice looks a lot more like dark blue to me, which would actually be water dust according to how it works in canon. But again, I'm just gonna label it as ambiguously questionable. <laughs> also, this is the coolest ice attack Weiss has ever done. If she wants to be the ice queen, she's gotta pull out this move a lot more often cause damn girl, go ham with your ice attacks. That, lame. This, stupid. But this, now that's an ice attack. <laughs> As the Armagigas swings to destroy the ice around his feet, Weiss notices and takes the initiative, jumping onto his blade mid-swing. Weiss's sword is glowing pale green, and apparently even RT doesn't know what that's supposed to be. Green is supposed to be nature, though it's never been introduced in the actual show proper. According to the official companion book, green is nature. And Weiss's attack does nothing nature-related, but it does kind of look like this could have been maybe a wind attack. And in the official companion book, it says wind is white. However, contradictory, according to the official lore keeper, Eddie Rivas, who is also now one of the writers in the show, wind dust is pale green, but the effects are white. Do you remember what I said about canon until it isn't? <laughs> 
if this is actually how it's supposed to work, this means this is the only form of dust that has the dust being one color, but the effect is a different color, which is just definitely not confusing. <laughs> also, who wouldn't want their official companion book to not actually be technically accurate for the information of the show? Anyways, back to the white trailer. Weiss is charged up pale green strike, knocks the sword out of the Armageigus' hand, landing very dramatically behind her. Ooh, ah. I love this moment where he's like, oh shit. Where'd my sword go? <laughs> Weiss summons a blue glyph underneath her, which technically should just be freezing her, but I, I've proven by now that glyphs don't work quite the way they're supposed to be working. The sword falls behind her as she rather sadly poses. Huh. Armageigus charges in for a punch and Weiss evades, and as she does, she activates the glyph she had just left behind, now underneath the Armageigus, sending him flying upward. Little thing, love this rainbow effect on the big glyph as it launches him. It looks cool. Kind of like Weiss was mixing a whole bunch of different dust together in order to make this work. As he's doing that, Weiss twirls around summoning many very small glyphs, something we won't see her do again until the fight against the Lancers in Volume 5, Episode 2. It looks like she launches her glyphs in a way that is meant to hold Armageigus in place. I don't know if this is meant to be a dust type thing, or just a scrapped idea on how her glyphs could have been working, but uh, we don't see this in the show proper anymore. Which is a shame, because I think it looks cool. <laughs> Weiss does one last jump upward, perfectly timed with singing Weiss's high note, and Weiss defies the laws of physics and gravity again to do another mid-air spin and dramatically poses in front of the moon. With this following up Ruby's moon pose from the red trailer, this pattern cemented it as a concept for a staple of Ruby trailers for years to come. Until the Blake character short where suddenly they stopped doing that. Just another reason as to why volume 5 is the worst volume. So as Weiss's rapier lands on white dust, her entire handle and blade glows, almost like it's runes, with the use of the white glow of the dust. And I know I've said about 500 times already how I wish Weiss would use some of these cool moves that we've seen in this trailer in the show proper, but out of all of them, this is the one I really wish they kept around. Not only does it look beautiful and epic, but I love the idea of the character representing the color white having a final attack that incorporates the color white into the weapon. Her final blow being overlaid with her singing always gives me chills. It's so cool, it's so dramatic, and it really just punctuates both the power of her strike and the power of her song. Then the huge shattering effect as the Armageigus not only looks big and important for such a huge foe, but also the use of the glass shattering effect mimics Weiss's lyrics of Mirror Mirror. As we fade from fighter Weiss to singing Weiss, the snow effect behind her goes from falling upward to falling downward, perhaps tying into the reflection aspect from the beginning of the trailer. And that was the white trailer. The things that stand out to me the most is just how not show accurate so many things are. Of course, like I said when I covered the red trailer, a lot of these things ended up not being canon in the long run. But when I talked about it then, I meant more things like their characterization or person personality. The white trailer is probably the biggest example about how aspects of the world and combat ended up being changed during the pre-production of the show. Of course, there's the bigger, more obvious things, like how Dust or Weiss's glyphs aren't exactly the same as how we see in the show, to even just little stuff, like her hair being transparent when it's over her eyes, or the tiny glow that accompanies her first glyph summon. Most of the animation goofs are blink and you miss it. The biggest thing that stands out in that regard is the questionable appearance of Weiss's scar. I remember seeing a lot of fan theories circulating on whether or not she actually got it here or not. Not only that, but there's a lot of speculation on how exactly this fight was happening. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, whether it's supposed to be physical, metaphorical, a memory, we all kind of just talked about it, and a lot of that buzz lasted into the show after it started, too. And of course, a lot of people couldn't wait to see the Armageigus, though we didn't know that's what it was called, showing back up in the show proper. While there are weird personal things that make me like this one least out of the original four, that by all means does not make this a bad trailer. It's a fascinating deep dive into the early concepts of Weiss's combat. And on the bright side, 
Now I can look forward to covering all the other trailers that I like better. Hooray! <laughs> Shout out to my $10 patrons, you're all amazing. Nako, James Dodds, Cool Duck, Andrew, Ramiel, Chamomile, Classy Critic, Trey Notre, Noah Perkins, Sunny Shy, Azoth, Great Bar, Pentamenta, Jake, Storm, Amber, Hype Man, Luno, Zero to Hero, Keithin, Isaiah, Joseph, Scaring Crows, Blue Wiz, Danny Boy, Holly, and Mary. So yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I love doing these analysis videos. Any thoughts and opinions you have about this trailer and anything I had to say about it, leave them in the comments below. Did you notice something I missed? What were some weird fan theories you had about the white trailer when it first came out? And again, if you want to be able to vote on what I do an analysis of next, consider becoming a patron. Also like, comment, subscribe, and you know, maybe help me out with the super chats down there. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.